Counting down. Good morning, Los Angeles. Good afternoon, New York. And good evening, Berlin. Uh, my name is Budgie, and I'm here this morning on PremierCollectibles.com with uh, esteemed author and uh, ex-drummer and co-founder of The Cure, Mr. Good friend of mine as well, Lol Tolhurst. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, yes, I'm Lol Tolhurst, and we're here to talk about uh, my new book coming out shortly, Golf. Oh, yes. My name's Budgie. Did I say that? Yeah. Did I? Okay. I have to remember sometimes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, it passes in for Nice, Nice hotel we're in at the moment. Yeah, not bad. It's... Uh, Oh hi, Tammy. I see we have. Uh, I know Tammy. She uh, she plays in a, a, another with one of my. Uh, Should we explain? Games. I suppose yeah. yeah. We, we're going to have a little chat first about about the new book. Yeah, we're going to have a chat about the new and book. And then we'll be taking questions, and uh, feel free to put them in the uh, the chat, and we'll we'll deal with them as we get them. Yeah, do our best to answer them. So, so go on. Let's set let's set set the uh, the, the the scene here. Um, yeah. You've you've successfully toured. I know uh, the memoir. You toured you toured three three imaginary uh, boys. And how did the idea for this new the new book goth come together? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I I had been as you said. I went on tour with my previous book, Cured, and uh, I'd done i don't know about 300 shows and stuff anyway what i realized uh talking to people that would come to the the book events was that what they really wanted to know about was the uh the feeling the experience of growing up in in that time like 70s and early 80s and when the sort of the the goth thing started to happen um and how it related to punk and how it related to glam and how it relates to things that came before that so that's really where the idea for the the, the book goth came from mm -hmm. um was it a labor of love or was it like a play did it take you to places you went oh i don't remember i, I that was a, oh i'd rather not talk about that or was there anything that, that along those lines well that happens with every book i think it takes you to places it's like any uh artistic discovery you know you have to uh you have to investigate, and especially for goth, because it's it's really what I would call uh, a historical memoir. I was going to say, where did, where did you begin? What, what, what was the research, and how did it come about for you? Um, well, for a start, I didn't do the research myself, because I hate research. It's like homework. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, Good, honest yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to do that. So what I much prefer is joining all things together in the stories and, and weaving a tale in amongst it. And um, so you put know, your good your good son to uh, to work yeah, on this as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my my son, you know, I, I I paid lots of money for him to go to <laughs> college and stuff. So I said, now's the time. To and pay. the boy done well. Yeah, oh, so now's the time to pay your old man back and use your degrees. So he was my researcher, and uh, he did very well for the first time. And. Um, you know, not for the first oh, time. Come on, no, no, he, did very, he did very well as his first time as as a researcher, and uh, I think overall the process was about eighteen months. Because rather like the second album, the second book is is kind of difficult. You know, you have to decide well, what are you going to uh, what are you going to write about? How are you going to you know? Uh, move things so along. So how did you do that? How did you kind of? There's such a wealth of information out there. You could have started way back in the uh, the Shelleys and yeah. uh, the late district of England and yeah. dark m moonlit nights. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 at the beginning of the book, I have an author's notes that says what interests me is the why and the wherefore. You know, I'm not, I didn't want it to be like an encyclopedia because I couldn't really get my head around that anyway. I wasn't, uh, that wasn't what I was thinking. I was thinking I want to take people on a journey of how you get to, you know, how do you get to be a goth, really? How you get to have all those influences and feelings and, and what it was that made it start. So, therefore, I just picked uh, certain key elements, key people that would illustrate that. So, you're right, you know, but going back to, to actually to Mary Shelley, who's as, to me is as important as her husband with the whole thing with Frankenstein. You know, that's that's one area you get into. But there's other 
other things there's other literary influences architecture architecture there's art yeah. there's there's all kinds of things that connect it together yeah. and to me they all start to coalesce about the end of the 70s in uh in 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 punk and in sort of that's the, that's the start of where the idea for gothic music started to to rise and when i talk about gothic music i'm not talking about older music might have some gothic tendencies i'm talking about um you know any surprises there for you did, did you come back oh this is kind of something i wasn't expecting um yes uh, and yeah yeah there are there are some things i mean i i, I realize that um goth is actually very close in some ways to it, it's not as uh, as uh monochromatic and and um you know dismal as some people would think it's actually quite uh invigorating in lots of ways and what are, what are the brighter moments of well i think you know there's a lot of people now say like you know ourselves who are a little older and things and and uh I, I know a lot of people here in Los Angeles where I live who still live a sort of goth lifestyle and for them it's a good way of uh, of of aging gracefully if you like it's not it's like they haven't sort of succumbed and said well they're just gonna throw everything else out and become a, a normal oh, kind of person look we've got the goth refuse collectors yeah, outside have. the window yeah, yeah sorry about all that a little extra morning noise. chaps morning yeah. yes yeah. and all dressed in yeah yeah, they're throwing the old crucifixes out. Or yeah, yeah. Somebody wrote up here: drugs and music equals goth. I, I would take uh, issue with that. I think it's uh, goth is more a way of of being. But um, I was going to add that was my next question. You yeah. just leave those questions alone for the moment. Yeah. It's like, so what, what what would you have? Would you come away with a kind of clearer or more a broader understanding of of goth? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, because there are people that I consider goth that you probably wouldn't initially consider goth. People like uh, the author Sylvia Plath. Uh, I think, yeah. you know, her work is basically uh, sort of proto-feminist goth in lots of ways to me. And uh, I think that was really the biggest change in, in music in the last uh, 40 years with, with rock music in particular because rock music beforehand was definitely more uh misogynistic and and based on 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 something that was perhaps a little less uh inward looking and with this kind of music came a chance to be for, especially for men mm. to be vulnerable and in touch with their feelings which is kind of like where glam rock kind of introduced yes. those things i mean there is a kind of a a visual code there's a dress code in in many ways i know it certainly exists in in germany where i you know where i live um there's a big gothic festival in leipzig um and it's very to do with costume and drama and and, and yet it embraces industrial and, and, and metal and really diverse um in fact you know we our bands were we first labelled, you know, the, the originators of goth, yeah, and and we would like sh run from the the, the that we hated labels really. Yeah. So, how has it changed? In if you like, how has it changed your um, acceptance? I suppose of um, of, of, of of the the, the terminology that we we're forced to use, uh, you know, when, when we're trying to describe to others um, the genre. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the biggest things that I, I wanted to express in this its book, especially in in goth, it was was that uh, the the um, the sort of uh, comical uh, you know aspect of what 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 goth is supposed to be and how it's described. Yeah, yeah, described in the press, you know, um, Portlandia with Fred, mm. great. Absolutely. Lovely, right. wonderful. Yeah. We lo we watch it all the time. Thank yes. you, Fred. Um, so th that way of describing it really kind of 
uh, pieces it into being a lot more um, one-dimensional. It actually is, you know, the, the idea of bats and sleeping in coffins and what have you. That's that's not really it. It's like when people thought about punk, they thought, well, it's the hair. Safety, and the safety pins. Safety pins, and yeah. And, and that doesn't, spitting. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really describe it. It's... Uh, it's a lot deeper than that. We, we grew up on the Hammer Horror, I think we? Vincent yeah. Price and oh, yeah. Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee. Yeah. And it was always the uh, the shot of the, the curtains being torn down, the sunlight coming in and the yeah. body in the coffin turning into dust. Dust, yeah, yeah. straight away. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's much uh, deeper than that because it's, it's more... What I've come to understand through writing Goth is it's more of a... It's not really even a subculture. It's it's more, and it's actually, if it is a subculture, which it might be as well, um, it's like the longest lasting one other than something like hip hop, you know? I mean, it's been going for 40 years in this particular mood and it's not going away anytime soon. I go all over the place in America and yeah. every little small town I see at least you know, a handful of kids I know oh, are, yeah. are goth are going to be goth. There are go goth babies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there are generations now. Certainly what I mentioned yeah. in Leipzig, they've known the festival has been going for 17 years or yeah. something. It's, it's been, it's big. Yeah. It's, um, it's also, it's going to be, uh, it, it's, it's like as much, like I say, it's not a subculture so much. It's a, it's a way of approaching the world. It's a way of approaching life. And it's more, it has more connections really with some of the cult culture stuff of the 60s and, and early 70s than it does with other things in some ways because it's a, it's a, a very accepting kind of philosophy. Because you'll remember this back in the days mm -hmm. when we used to go to the Camden Palace and the Bat Cave. There were all kinds of people in there. They weren't just, they didn't all look goth. They mm. all kinds of. It was to do with um, money as well sometimes, you know, what you could afford or what you could invent. Um, yes. you, you and I have been doing Curious Creatures podcasts, right, for yeah. the last two and a half years. Yeah. Like we've done, and we've met a lot of old friends who some of them we've never spoken to before, and a lot of new artists who embrace a lot of the thinking. Um, yeah. that, we, that we we put together. Um, don't really know what the question is, though. Well, um, should we? You seem to be you're scrolling through some questions. There's a lot of them. In. There's yeah. a lot of questions coming in. But you know, if I if like a brief synopsis of the book is, is you know so that people will know it, it's it is a historical memoir. So it does have lots of things about all the connections that are made over the years, but that draw into the, the, the goth idea, mm. but it's also, uh, it's not a sequel, but it, but it's ad an addition to Cured because it does have a lot of personal stories in it and personal memories. And hopefully they all join together to, to give you a bigger picture of it all. One of my influences, literary influences in writing this, because it took me at least six months of thinking about how am I going to do this? Was I read a Californian writer, Joan Didion, and I really, really liked the way she talked about the counterculture in the 60s, especially in places like San Francisco. She made each each story, which was, a, you know, a proper, like a news story, she made it in a way that was, was entertaining to read and informative and beautiful. And that was my, my template, if you like, because... Uh, I'm not a journalist, and neither did I want to be a journalist. No. I did, and I could not write a book that was in a journalistic bent. I wanted to write a book that reflected my own experiences in in this genre, in this subculture, in this life. And and that's really, you know, you write what you know, and that's what I wrote. Yeah. Anyway, so what should we do? Some some yeah, questions. Yeah. I was, yeah. I I have my own questions. I was just gonna. I was okay, formulating one, and then, then the dust cart came back. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me let me look at the, the first one at the top of the list. Uh, <laughs> Lol, hey, Lolly, he's a really good person. That's thank you, Bruno Um And and there's lots of I love you guys. Um, that's that's something that came in looking forward okay yeah. let me let me scroll through yeah you scroll through uh, i don't hope something comes in for you to be in rome yeah possible yeah. possible just you have take to... your this tour of uh, the book uh presentation will take you around the states it's south take... america probably yeah take me all around the world if with any luck and you know in, into europe yeah uh there's always going to be another generation of goth well that's true yeah 
that's true. They're all there, still there. Let me see. Looking forward. To, okay, there's lots of congratulatory things. It's all Thank you. lovely, lovely. Uh, it's a chance for a creative revolution we saw during the late seventies. Wow. That's uh, what do you think of alternative music today? Um, you know, you, you say like the, uh, another revolution. I think there's one going on as we speak, but uh, music in general occupies a slightly different place than it did back in the, the early 80s. Uh, now, you know, the internet has changed a lot of things, not necessarily for the good. Um, so, you know, it, it's always there and, it, and people always want that sort of direct transmission of energy from performer so they're going to watch shows and they're going to see things you know okay i'm just looking at it. okay what's this one is that no it's not like two legends looking good guys okay oh, thank yes thank you very much uh yes uh, i did dye my hair somebody asked that earlier on it's like you know it's bleach uh, so, yeah. I, never, never, I never touched my eyes <laughs> yeah yours is natural <laughs> yes naturally yeah. colorless yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for years oh gosh it's great bleaching your hair for years it's a great facelift um i have a question let's click on that yeah no oh i have a question yeah answer ask a question he's not going to answer no no Mark. Yeah. Okay. okay hello from aberdeen That's wow me. yeah oh no i see yeah. I, I just quick I, <laughs> I clicked on aberdeen and it gave me a readout uh, oh okay what are your challenges as a writer in a literary fashion okay well, I, let me do the bit you proper, do that yeah. you answer you, no, you do well, okay. can i just ask as a question a burning question uh, and I've lost it. What are your challenges as a writer in a literary fashion versus music? Um, I think the, the challenges are exactly what I said. It's like I don't want to be a journalist. So if I was a music journalist, it would be a different way of writing. To write in a literary fashion means I have to write uh, what I love in, in, in reading, you know, the books I read. So um, I don't, I don't uh, ascribe the same uh, greatness in in the the prose, but I really that that's where I'm aiming for. I'm aiming to be uh, a social commentator and to be a bit more literate, not just about music. Okay, here's a, there's a question over here yes. from uh, Kristen in uh, New Hampshire, and mm -hmm. it says, "What do you think of all the minor subcultures that have developed around goth? Does having people identify as rainbow goths dilute the culture, or just add another element? At what point is goth?" just not goth anymore yeah um interesting question who is that from that's from Kristen raymond in new hampshire Kristen raymond okay you know uh, my son has has a band and he was telling me that, that a lot of people now they take maybe one element of of a particular sort of thing like goth and they amplify that one element and that is their uh one thing so i i don't see it as diluting stuff i see it as as uh, you know, like there's there's lots of little tributaries coming off, but they're all from one river. Okay, another question here from Brian in San Diego. What what do you do you feel was the most altering moment in goth history or of goth wow. history? Uh, I don't know that I can say that really. I don't think I. I mean, actually, what, what for you, what in in, in, in writing uh, the the book. Um, what stood out for you? I was because I was going to ask you. You had to kind of focus down on a on a cast of characters, yeah, um, yeah. and then dig deeper into what made them tick. I, know, I think I think there was there was there's things that you look at visually, like Sue. You know, they're, they're, that's Susie a, Sue. Yes, I know yes, that name. You know that name. Yeah. And uh, and you know, and there's like different attributes i don't think there is one thing that that i can think of that like ah that's the most important point in it i think it's all important okay no no kind of timeline thing where it kind of switched no. from one to another. Well, well i mean obviously you know with 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 our, our friend uh, kevin haskins band you know Bauhaus, there was uh, there was a time you know with bella lugosi that took like you know some stuff from the dub world and and then made it a little different you mentioned uh, the bat cave in london you know yes. there were many times you turn up at the queue outside the back cave and see yeah. like impersonators in front of you in the queue in, yes. uh, getting in on your name yes and that was really that was really interesting because <laughs> i'd always want to be at the back of the queue anyway not yeah. wanting to go hey right. do you realize who we are yeah but there was a kind of feeling that i i certainly felt it where there was something happening in front of me in the back cave which was taking yes. it very much in a diff in a direction not just post-punk but right. really establishing uh, uh, as you say uh, making more of a look that for maybe Susie was yeah. kind of 
uh, in passing. Right. It, it was another one of the things she invented for that tour, say yeah. around Juju. Yeah. Um, do you feel, do you think there was any is there anything in that? And is that a ty- kind of moment? Things well, yeah. Know? I mean, I think that's definitely a starting point for a lot of adventures afterwards, for sure. Yeah. I like this question. Okay. Uh, hi, both. Was it just a coincidence that John Robb also recently had a book on Gothic counterculture, also published? Um, well, if you mean by that question, did we did we collude? Did we talk to each other, me and John? And uh, also, there's another book on Goth. Kathy Unsworth's written one. Um, no, none of us knew no. the others was writing a book. Of God. It just happened to be, you know, something that came up at the same time. We didn't go, okay, you put yours out first, and I put mine out. No, we were both all interested. I can, in I can see from dipping into both of those books, John's and Kathy's, yeah. which are both, you know, interesting and and well put together. But they're very, uh, to not say but, but they are. <laughs> okay, I said it again. They are very uh, chronological. Uh, they and whereas I, I, I think yours, as you pointed out, is joining the dots of your own experience. Yes, really, that's very as, good. As, yeah, yeah, that's a very good way of looking at it. As a yeah, member yeah. of that, so you know, take your pick. Uh, there's decent goth population in Krakow in Poland. You can guess with us if you come for a book signing gig here, lol. Oh, wow, thank you. I, I've, I, I've been to Poland. I enjoyed it very much. I've been to all sorts of play. And it's, uh, that's that's from George Young there yeah. in Krakow. And uh, Joe Diane says, good afternoon from Toronto. Hello, Toronto. We love it. I love Toronto. Uh, let's see. No, no, okay. Well, yeah. Hello from Aberdeen. No, <laughs> much love from Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, I can never say Ohio, but oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, Copy ordered. We like that. Yeah, that's good. Copy ordered. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Scott Irwin. No, this is. Uh, let's see. That okay. So, and I'm going to look over here quickly. Yeah. Fun, the funniest moment you remember with your friend Robert Smith. Funniest moment. Uh, there were lots of funniest moments. We used to laugh a lot. You know, and then then something happened with laughter. I don't know. But we we had some very funny moments. Yeah. I mean, how do you say how many funny moments you have with somebody you know since you were five? Okay, I know. I have a funny moment from Rome, actually, when okay. Ro- Robert would not get up out of bed because Robert was playing with the Banshees at that right. point on tour. And uh, Susie was downstairs waiting for him in the lobby. Oh. So uh, I oh. said, where's Robert? Oh. Said, he's, he's not come down from his room yet. Oh, so Susie goes back up to the floor. Robert's in the room next door to where she yeah. was. Yeah. She shins out onto the ledge around the side of the hotel. It's a couple of floors up. Oh, Robert was airing his <laughs> brothel creepers on the window ledge outside <laughs> with yeah. the scarves tied around them so yeah. she knew it was the right room. Yeah. Burst in through the open window, very kind of Hammer Horror style, yeah. and like threw them like missiles, hard as she could. You never seen somebody wake up so well. I actually didn't see because I wasn't there on the uh, edge with her. Uh, but I, yeah, it'd be great to be a fly on the a wall. A fly then. on the wall. If yeah. only we had the GoPro, then yeah. never mind. Okay. Um, let it's me see what the questions. latest questions came in. Please, Please come, come to the Whitby Festival soon. They did ask me actually. Uh, I think like last year or the year before. Um, yeah, there's plenty of time, right? What's the Whitby Bay uh, connection, Lol? Whitby Bay. I don't know. It's a goth festival. That's all I know. Oh yeah, but it's it's the best in 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 the the, the kind of in the uh, mythology. What do I think about Italian goths? If you read Goth, my book, yeah. Goth: A History, yeah, there's a bit about Italian mods in it, not goths, but Italian mods. So that that's my question. I can. That's Emiliano Pinacoli or Pinacioli, if maybe it's a soft C. Um, Marco Sabatini, yeah. uh, what's your opinion of Manchester scene, the bands you love and you hate from that? Um, well, Tim Tim mm. Burgess, our good friend. Oh, I yes, love Tim, his Tim, band. Timmy's lovely. Yeah, I love his band. Great. Um, I don't hate anybody, really. You are you are that kind of a person, Lol. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to, um, to be with you after all these years and sitting here. Talking about your new book, yes. Goth. Thank you. So, Sergio Jimenez. Hello, lol. The book in Spanish, please. That's on its way. Are you, are you good at Spanish? Not really. <laughs> I, I, I did a year at school with Mr. Rodriguez. Ah, That's okay. Yeah. They, they don't ask you to sit down there with a the dictionary. and uh, no, 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 no. I just knew how to pronounce that name. Because uh, but living in you do California. spend a lot of time, because you told me many times about... Uh, the fun and, and the joy of, of reading your book for the audio book. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. I, I did the audio book for this one recently, and there's a little little something that nobody really knows yet. Is this I, the tip? Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that I, there's I, gonna I, be I, I, there's cool. gonna be me and Budgie. You know, we do other things together besides talk on screens to people. Mm -hmm. um, we've been making an album the last few years, which is coming out soon, and there's a little snippet of something exciting on the audiobook from that album. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. That's the end. album Los Angeles from yes. where we're broadcasting from right now. Yeah, so okay, this. Yasmin Wyeth, hoping to see you, pardon me, hoping to see you at Rough Trade in a few days. Really? Well, it's not a few, it's, a, it's probably a couple of weeks. When maybe. are you there? What's the date? Uh, 20... Uh, first, I think it's twenty first. I think it's twenty first September, which is the, the date of release of the book in England. That's yeah. right. That's when I head off back to Berlin. You head yeah. over to London. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go Anything else happening around that promotional trip? Uh, I'm going to Brighton. I'm going to Letchworth. And I'm coming back to New York and doing one in New York and one in Okay. LA. So all you people out there in Brighton, and I know Letchworth is a big uh, gathering of the yeah. literati, uh, and that will be good. Uh, Let's, I was just going to say before we get to that one, oh, so yes. she's going to see you at Rough Tread in a few days. Yeah. But just do, she's got questions, which is going to be in the audience, obviously. But do you think the apparent resurgence in goth, resurgence in goth at the moment is at all a reflection of the social political times of the moment? Uh, yes. Do you like no, to so expand so, so, upon that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, of course I will. Um, I'm good at expanding. Um, we can expand, <laughs> extrapolate, <laughs> all those good words. All of those words. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course it is. It's like punk. Punk was like, you know, the end of the 70s, and, you know, Mrs. Thatcher and Ronnie Reagan were coming in and life was terrible. And of course, there's something comes out from that. And the same with, you know, music's always a reflection. Any art is a reflection of the time it's uh, around, you know, and when the world is great and everything's going on great. There's not really that much to write about, so everybody's you know busy sat sunning themselves at the beach. So, was it was it um, a part of the writing process for you? We were in. I think you did a bulk of this whilst we couldn't be doing much else. Right, right. It was done in uh, yeah. In, I, I did a lot of it up in uh, in uh, the High Sierras. I have a little cabin up there that I was allowed to use and uh, wrote a lot of the book. Why that there. really is misery territory, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely no, 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 no stalkers outside, no grizzlies. No, well, there's a few bears, as I found out later. <laughs> Rustling <laughs> around in the bins outside. Oh, yeah. Coyotes howling at night over oh, the, yeah. the moonlit lake. Yeah, there's a bit of that going on, That's for sure. That would be. Yeah. So it was really right right through the COVID lockdown. Yeah. yeah. So we, we've been, lots of things going on. Are you touring the US with your book? Sorry, I missed if that was uh, already mentioned. I think we're touring the US with book, music, everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, what can you say? Is that one from yeah. uh, Manuel Iglesias? Yeah. Uh, what can you say about the links and feelings between music and being gothic? Yeah. Greetings from Argentina. Yes. Well, I, I was recently in Argentina for my previous book, A Wonderful Place in, in Buenos Aires. And uh, yes, of course, there's a connection because, you know, the way you look is the externalization of your feelings, right? That's a lovely answer. Um, yeah, I just thought of that. One. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> I remember that one. Let's like, yeah. uh, I, I'm going to write it down. Yeah. Um, let me see. I'll just uh, Kevin uh, O'Neill asks: Are there photos in the book? There are. There's about seventy odd photos. Tell us about. They're very old, actually. Um, they're all photos from from different uh, times with uh, different bands that are mentioned in the book, and uh, so you know, I had to trawl around and talk to a lot of people and get photos. And then there's uh, some photos that are more recent, and there is a photo or two, I think, done by my wife as well. So there's personal photos in there too. That's an intimate photo. Yes. Oh, okay. What's your favourite photo in the book? Is there one that is most poignant memory for you? Uh, actually, my favourite photo is the one at the very second to the very end. Well, there's one at the end which is about the Elephant Fest Fair Festival, but I like that one. But I also like there's one just before that which is done by Louis Rodea, who's a, a photographer at the moment. He, we, we both used him, right? Yes, for the yes. Los Angeles cover. Yeah, for the cover and. Uh, and I like his photo. And also there's a photo that Cindy took right at the very beginning of the book. 
we shouldn't go because we mentioned the, uh, the the album cover and of course your, your book cover these are your photographs this has been something right. that's been ongoing in your it's sort of in the background and, yeah. and you've brought it to very much into the the foreground now as a yeah. another part of your uh, creative expression yeah. it was very surprising to me because i don't ever really consider myself a photographer at all i mean i like the way i like composition the way things look but i'm no way am i a professional photographer i just take shots but, but, of what i like but it's, it's is it not similar to saying you and i probably go in the whole of our careers going yeah i play the drums i'm not really a musician <laughs> i mean no we've just are our own yeah. worst critics yeah and i think to a certain extent self-deprecation comes with the territory right but um I'm very grateful that people actually like the photos, which is wonderful. But you've taken it somewhere else. You, it's not just like you click and then file away, maybe for future reference. You've started and the images as soon as you've taken them, which right. is to me is like, you know, taking the, the film home, developing it and, yeah. and, and sticking it up in a different process. It's not just well, accepting what you just looked at and saying, well, I've recorded that moment. Yeah. I think you need to, uh, to, to re acknowledge that. Well, thank you. I will, I will do that. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm acknowledging it for you. Thank you. You're it, acknowledging it for it's, me. It's, it's more than, it's a, it's a process. Uh, oh, anything. here's a good question. Okay. I was treading water a bit there, to the case. Okay. <laughs> but not really. I think it's an important point. Uh, did you record the Los Angeles album remotely from each other? No. No. We did it. We did it together. We did, and that, that, yeah. that's why this is me and Law being here the first time it's since March 13, 2020, yeah. is the day after we'd finished the initial tracks of the album, and I left to go yeah. back home to Berlin. And since that time, we've been running the podcast. Everything has been online. Yeah. Uh, so it's really nice to be um, here. Yeah, right back, in, back in town. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sharing coffee. Lovely yeah, coffee, because Law yeah. makes great coffee. A tr he grinds it himself. It's like, oh, the, it's the, these processes. Yeah. And um, Still playing trumpet, Law. Um, yes. Law, playing trumpet? Yeah. Well, you only think you in kept the video. that one quiet? Only in the video. <laughs> no. No, only in the video, not me. Oh, that's lovely. Photography yeah. is good therapy, says Michelle Horning. Yeah, Michelle's online with us. All oh, right, it is. It is. Oh, good it would be fun to have you both watch a video with great drumming, like some people do on YouTube. Hang on, let me just read that again. Yeah. It would be fun to have you both watch a video with great drumming, like some. Does that mean we watch like Ian Pace together? Yeah, yeah, watch him play in the mule. Well, we did that the other day because we had some questions. Yeah. But it, it's. Do we have any icons of drums? Yeah, well, Ian Pace was an icon of drumming for us, I think, both of us, and uh, Ginger Baker, and... Uh, more contemporary. Like, more contemporary. Uh, we both like Topper, don't we? Yeah, yeah, Topper Hayden, great, great drummer. I like the guy from Robert from Wire. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love the atmosphere of your photos. They deserve to be collected in the book. That's the next book coming along. One of them, anyway. A compilation of your photo, photographs. Yeah, work. well, no, I th what I was thinking is, I was thinking, I'll write another book and just put my photos in rather than get a lot of other people's photos. Okay, okay. Um, oh, Manuel, Manuel's back again. Can you mention some characteristics that have... Has to have in... So the Gothic has to have. Has to have. Um, a, an acceptance of all people and things. Generally, no, seriously, that's, that's like uh, inclusiveness. Okay. Berlin is a stunning city. Yeah, so, it has its yes, moments. It has its moments. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, okay. Uh, that's a good one. I can't read it. Uh, I'll give you our band in case you want to listen. That's very kind. Um, let's see. Anything at the top? No? Uh, Jet Black, drummer legend. Yeah, yeah, Stuart Black. Copeland's on the line. Hey, Stuart. How yeah. you doing? Yeah, no, he's not there. Have either of you been in contact with Boris? Well, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Boris Williams, we are talking of uh, the drummer that came in with when you were also in the band law. Yes, right? that's you, right. you, you know, he, he sat down and you stood up. Um, Boris, um, I helped Boris to, he relocated in, uh, in, from Britain to France, where I was living at the time. Yeah. And I helped Boris move into his, his current home. Yeah. And we've been in and out of each other's lives for the past 
Ooh, 12, 15 years. Yeah. In fact, I just left his place. Yeah, he did. Now, yeah. I was on holiday with my family, and we often pop down, see Boris. Um, and it's lovely. It's, yeah. it's, it's, we have a, a, a lovely extended family, don't we, of um, yeah. people? Uh, I, uh, I, I, re I met Boris when I was doing the Cured tour in England, and I, I went to Bath, and he was living in Bath at the moment, so I... Uh, I went there and uh, saw him. That was the last time I saw him. So it says, do you rank the most goth cities in the book? Short answer, not really. Okay. But I think you'll get an idea of where they are from it a bit. Um, we did not. Oh, no, David, we did not work with David J. Haskins. We worked with Kevin Haskins, and we had a lovely time. Yes, he's a we, lovely uh, We went up, and, and, and Kevin was the only one who could get any sense out of Siri. Yeah. <laughs> so um bye say goodbye the, the dog's leaving us now and and and, and the lady with the dog okay. uh, the dog is eating no feet. we're in hotel hotel land uh budgie you're planning on writing a book i, I can ask you that question that budgie are you planning on writing a book who me yeah yes yeah. yes i have i've been it's, it's basically been an ongoing thing for a quite a few years now and it's really started to come into a, a real thing so um, i'm just plowing on with it yeah. and uh, i'm sure it'll be part i think we're kind of opting for somewhere in a couple of years time going to need about a year to put it all together um brazy cuts says uh, all cats are gray brilliant and one of the best songs is a song from you lol Okay, or oh, and the lyrics is something yeah. you were you do mention a bit yeah. in in, um, yeah. in goth. One thing I mentioned in in goth was like you know a lot of people don't know, or maybe they know and they. It's just I wanted to reclaim some of the arts of things. Yeah, the lyrics for all cats are great. That's mostly me. You know, with oh, oh, the thing is, I explain it all in the book, which is a better place to read it because it will take far too long sitting here to tell you but um, i thought what you said last night was uh, the nicest thing you in the way, best way of putting it it was you did you remember you paraphrased it the, your inclusion of an explanation of lyric writing oh, and, yeah yeah i've got it here i'm gonna read read yeah. it out because um it's going to go in another news yeah as an author you're always having to take notes because the best ideas yeah. come out just as you're saying good night to yourself right, right. Uh, it's either the pad by the bedside table or the, the... Okay, okay. I realized at one point I had to reclaim some of my artistic past, a part of my past as part of my recovery from the problems that plagued me at the end of the cure. So it's been helpful and healing and not done in a way that promotes ego. So I, I've reclaimed some of the stuff that I've done. Okay. Uh, Kevin is so underrated. I think we say that. Yes. It, yeah. All drummers are underrated yes. because yeah. then always a lot more than just drummers in the band. Which brings me to my next question, Ross Allen. Who's Budgie? Well, <laughs> it, I think it's been answered up here by Michelle Honing, <laughs> who says Budgie is, is a... Oh, my God, Budgie is a god. Who, who is he? Who is he? I know. Yeah. I, 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 I realise, you know, sometimes I don't know who... I really am myself, and that's part of the reason we get down and maybe write these thoughts so, down. You know, <laughs> let me let me just explain to myself yeah. who, who, who what's going on here. So here's a, a one from Charlie Parker Jr., who I don't believe for a moment that's your name, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does that go to? I can't, oh, that, oh, there he is. Charlie he says, goes. "What about Paul, mate? Good question. I haven't heard from." For a few years, okay. Now, well, disappeared. What is the what is the most goth food? Goth food. Mm. We had it last night, probably. Yeah, black rice. With these black lentils. Black lentils. Black lentils. Black lentils. Black, black lentils. Dark. Black lentils. Dark. Oh, yeah, so delicious. Yeah. Uh, Budgie, do you keep in contact with Susie? Did you catch any of her tour? Um, it's a. It, you know, we try. The door is open. Um, I, haven't, I, I, I did, I was quite remiss. I didn't send her a birthday card this year. I never haven't for a few years now. But who knows? We never say never. Um, but hey, you know, we spent a long time uh, really doing everything together. And I think that would put a strain on even uh, a regular relationship where both people went out to do separate jobs. We never had time off. 
um, and perhaps that was a sign of that. So do we keep in touch? I do see what she's up to, and I really think that she seemed very relaxed, probably more than I've ever known on the most recent touring. And the word, I didn't get a chance to, to get out to see any of the shows, um, but the word from good old friends here in LA was she was looking better than ever and, and really looking like it was all going well. So wishing you well. Good, 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 good. There's a couple of interesting questions here. Um, from Mazet Ludovic. Why is Goth not translated in French like Cured was? Give it time. We haven't got it out yet. Okay. The book's not out yet. It will be translated. Uh, do either of you own any cats or other pets? Uh, other pets. I own other pets. I own a dog. I have a dog called uh, Fiona. Okay. But I've got... Uh, you got cats. I've got three cats and a dog. Yeah. Yeah. We've got quite a household. I like this one. This Do you good. think your drumming style would have been different if you'd lived in a warmer climate when you were younger rather than a cold, wet England? Guy Marshall, how astute. What do you think, Lol? I think it would have been um, it would have been quite as fast and frantic because, you know, it, you, to, to play drums fast and frantically would keep you warm in cold, wet England. So we had to do a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's certainly different styles on different sides of the Atlantic. Yeah, um, yeah. We the, the the speed speed of punk, if you like, and post punk in England was very close right. and akin to the East Coast, to New York. But I remember being shocked when I came here to California yeah. for the first yeah. time. Yeah, there was a lot of long drumming. Oh, Charlie Parker said that is my name, mate. There you go. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> and I he's got you. he's smiling as well. So uh, yeah. okay, I, of course we do. That's good. Well, your your father obviously. Was a bit of a jazz fan then. Oh, okay. Oh, ah, absence of tone makes it hard to interpret intention correctly. Sorry, not sorry. Absence of tone. Uh, so we we're getting that's deep. Yeah, it's deep. Yeah. Come on, we're coming up to we're coming up to uh, our like little cutoff time quite soon. Yeah. So thank you uh, very much, uh, like Lol. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm not going to cut off yet, but I wanted to get uh, like a. But Jim Law, can you tell me a word in French? I have I have a really good word in French. My favorite word in French. Sure. En français. Oui. Um, uh, malheureusement. Ah oui, malheureusement. And you yes. said it in a kind of southwest accent as well, <laughs> where they pronounce every yeah. part like une, yeah. bag, une baguette. Yeah. I, je, 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 j'aime beaucoup uh, le baguette. <laughs> Who uh, doesn't? Okay. Is it, uh, okay. Mm, so that's the word in French. Yes. Gray or gray? G R A Y. Good. Yes. Let's go to clear these things up. Mm-hmm. If the British music press had been more supportive of goth music and really championed the whole goth scene, do yeah. you think more bands would have been happy to be labeled goth? Well, I'll tell you something, Peter Fox. That is the story of the, bu- blah, 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 the British music press incomplete. Because if they've been more champions of things, yeah, things would have existed more. And Charlie Parker Jr. says, where do y'all live now? And, uh, uh, well, that's it, you know. Uh, this is my first time back here in Los Angeles, uh, title of the new album, uh, back with Lol, author, yeah. m- musician extraordinaire. Um, Los Angeles, Berlin? Yeah, yeah, Los Angeles and Berlin. I lived, I lived here in Los Angeles for the last 30 years, so it's home. <laughs> But she, do you, will you be playing Sibutio in 2023? <laughs> well, I'm playing it all the time in my head, but uh, it's a bit difficult transporting. Oh, this is really nice. Okay, this is oh, Erwin Severin. Uh, let's let's get this. It was quite a long one. This might be the last. What I love about you, besides the fact that your podcasts relieve my stress because of the traffic jams here in Mexico City, is the way you debunk myths and reveal new stories about a beautiful era of which you were the creators. Humans, all too human, and on par, idols of hundreds of thousands of people make around, around the world. You make connections across generations and geographies, which is amazing. And I was wondering where the question was. Well, it's so very nice of yeah. you to say that, Erwin. I think it's, it's really, you know, the, the older I get, the more I realize we're, we're all connected and uh, Writing and making music is a way to examine those connections, you know. Okay. Are you both friends with Peter Murphy? Asked Jasmine. Um, you know, I've never met Mr. Murphy. No. 
I've oh. met him. I've met his good wife, who uh, choreographed a video for okay. us a, a few years ago. Uh, never had the pleasure. Uh, Budgie, I remember talking with you with John Grant about our shared appreciation of the Banshees, and years later you were drumming in his touring band. Magnificent. There I you thought, go. I thought so too. If it hadn't been for John Grant and me touring with John Grant and hitting yeah. Los Angeles that morning yeah. and having the opportunity, Lol and I would not be sitting here today. Okay. There's one. Well, one we would, last. but not together we doing would. this. It'd yeah. be different. You yeah. would, yes. Nicholas Hedges. Uh, no, no, no re relative relation to Michael. It might be. Okay. Lol, what was it like catching the cure this summer? Is it odd for you to go see them? Did the Twilight Sad blow your mind? They blew mine. Um, I didn't catch the Twilight Sad, I have to say, unfortunately. Um, for me, going to see the cure was like going back to the pub in 1977. Yeah. yeah. That's really what it was. Was everybody like. there? Or was, yeah. it, was the beer so bad? No, no, I, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't the, touch beer, the, beer. the beer is irrelevant to me nowadays. But, yeah. but uh, the, everybody that was there in the pub in 1977 was pretty much back was the smell, was it Was the smell of the booze there? Was that right? Yeah, well, yeah, that never goes no, It's a lot of smiling faces, so I hear. Right? Yes, the smiling faces. It was a happy time. A lot of people you haven't seen for a long time. Yes. Um, we're almost at the end. Uh, another question for you both uh, from okay. Manuel. Uh, you reached and transmitted. Uh, have you? Have you reached and transmitted everything you wanted want to as drummers? There are peaks and troughs. They're not really troughs, but there are certainly peaks in our drumming lives. Yes. But it's 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 the the all, the whole moment I think of being a drummer, as I tried sort of tried to put earlier, is a lot of it is not about playing drums. It's about just being in the band. Yeah. Uh, thanks for staying connected. That's lovely. Uh, Did Pearl go? I don't know. He hasn't gone. He's somewhere on the planet. But... You must see the twilight sad, I know. Stupid question. Budgie, what is your cure favourite secure song? And lol, what's your favourite creatures or banshees? Dong. Dong. Um, <laughs> okay, well, uh, I like I like the one where Budgie does. I think it's... it's I think it's well bound. We do the... Do, 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 do. Very. I mean, I, can, I can't do it better. Um, thank you very much, sir. It's very, uh, it's very kind. And uh, I always liked, I always liked the ones that give me your style, your signature style. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's kind of a forest has got to be yeah. right up there, okay. right thank up you. on top. And um, jumping someone else's train oh, yeah. and all cats are grey is like top. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, heroes. Lol and Pearl, without a doubt, my favourites. Of all time, you're you good old buddies from back in the day, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I I've known Paul since I was about fifteen. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's um, and we've known each other a long, long, long time, and it's really nice to be able to uh, offer you my services this morning. Thank you. Uh, as a go-between between all, all of your fans out yeah. there. And yeah. mutual mutual fans, it seems yeah. like quite often. No, we've got to go and have lunch. Right? I think, but well, breakfast, breakfast, yeah. <laughs> brunchy, lunchy, brunchy, lunch. Just say thanks to Lol and thank you, it's, thank it's, you to uh, our uh, premier collectibles, yeah. where you can uh, get all of this. Oh, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, right. Okay, um, we're probably yes. Well, we could leave, yeah. but we could just say brunch. Hey, this is John Acuff, New York Times best-selling author of seven books and someone who's done a live signing. If you like the one you just watched, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. It's full of amazing authors having great conversations and signing books for viewers just like you. So make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching today.